time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Four-hour recording studio. Recording. Wake your ass up, Mr. Friend Dog in the morning. Hello, everybody. It's Cox and Crendor time. I feel like you were about to say like it's Tuesday or it's Friday or it's some day, and then you just kind of switched it over to doesn't Cox, matter. Cox doesn't day. matter what day it is. It's Cox Day. Cox, Cox day. day sounds horrible. <laughs> it does. Like, it sounds like the purge. It sounds like everyone's gonna fear that day. Like Cox Day's coming. <laughs> That's right. Not Cox Day. Not Cox I Day. Would, I thought it wasn't real. Uh, we're back, and we have. Woo, gotten over con flus and uh, traveling mm-hmm. and all sorts of gibberish, but we actually now can podcast again. The reason why we I, I didn't podcast, I'll be honest with you, if you yeah. want to know, go back and watch that animated episode that is me dying while Crendor says a joke and I can't breathe and I'm actually choking to death. That was when I had a cold. And uh, I, I I also had another basic, basically this, I had the same thing I had last year which is I had bronchitis. So uh, for those of you who are like, what the hell's that? I don't even know. Apparently it's it's a like chest cold n- neck gibberish thing that let me tell you what it is that you can basically get. Here's the thing: their doctors are just like just gotta outlast it. That's all. <laughs> which is bull patootie because it sucks. And apparently there's a thing where if you get it one year. Chances are you're gonna get it next, like the following year. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Which is so dumb. Which, which mean, but here's the thing. Then they're like, but then after that you should be good. Which is like, wait. So <laughs> you get it, and then you get it again. I was like, wait. Does it mean I'm gonna get this every year? And they're like, no, no. It ain't, it's not gonna be a problem. It's like a new holiday. I'm not Bronchial a fan. Bronchial week. <laughs> I'm not a fan. It's it's. They're like, well, it could be you might have an allergen to something. Like, what do you mean? I might have an allergy to conventions or cats. I'm going to hope it's cats because that's easy to deal with. (laughs) Bronchitis apparently is the inflammation of the lining of your bronchial tubes. Yes. And what it does is it literally just makes you all mucusy and nasty. And that's it. Like you don't have a runny nose. You don't have anything. You just start coughing and you can't stop coughing. And when your job is to talk, that becomes a problem. Exactly. That does become a problem. Just like this guy. If you search acute bronchitis, I'm not gonna. On, don't, really I just, don't want to see a weird picture. There it is. What? It didn't do a thing. It just linked a bunch of text. I don't want to see a gross picture, Crendor. I don't. It's a cartoon it. man. Oh, is it a gross cartoon man? Search bronchitis in oh Google. Oh my god, that's a, you. What you sent me <laughs> is basically the internet code. You <laughs> sent in in the Matrix movies. That's what Crendor sent me in order to log me in order to log me in, jack me in. He sent me Matrix code. <laughs> All right, bronchitis mm-hmm. what? That's it. And then look at the little thing that pops up on the side. Bron- <laughs> that guy was me. <laughs> that can- guy coughing. He was just like... <coughs> 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 look at me. Now I, now I fake coughed and I started coughing for real. <laughs> That's how it starts. You fake it till you make it. It's very common. Easily spreads. Self-treatable. Self-diagnosable. Lab tests. Rarely required. Short term resolves in days to weeks. Days to weeks is the problem for me. Yeah, that's a problem. I got it when I was a kid, but I didn't do anything when I was a kid, so it didn't matter. Days to weeks is BS. Airborne spreads airborne, touching contaminated surfaces, skin to skin, saliva. I feel like in the future, mm-hmm. CoxCon will just be like, you wave to me across a, like a <laughs> bubble. There's a bubble, there's a barrier between us. Now and I wave back at you, and that's it. Oh, my God. Yeah. We might have to get rid of all the hugging and handshakes and <laughs> being near human beings. CoxCon 2017 <laughs> is literally just going to be me on a webcam <laughs> broadcasting Dude. to a convention center filled with people. I think that would improve it a lot, actually. I, I probably would be great. Probably would be better. <laughs> it's just like the screen comes down. It's like, greetings. It is I, your overlord. Yep. And then... That's it. That's it. Yeah. Then you can take a picture with the screen. Shit, dude. Shit, dude. Yeah. Apparently, I don't know. There's 
there's such a thing as chronic bronchitis, but that's if you're like a smoker and stuff. Yeah. I'm not that. I shouldn't have this every year. Yeah. That shouldn't be a thing that happens to me in my life. Yeah, this isn't, you know, what is this, like a bron- bronchiosaurus land? Acute bronchitis is very common, they say, generally caused by lung infections, 90% of which are viral in origin. Here's my here's my question. If it's a virus, mm-hmm. why won't the doctor give me medicine to cure it? The doctor gave me a bunch of medicine. I literally was like, look, doc, I need to get back to work. I will take anything. Give me anything and everything to get this over with. I'm like, all right, we'll give you all these different packs. And we'll get you all good so you can go back to work immediately. Yeah. It helped me. It helped me out. That's true. But clearly, as you can tell, I'm still coughing a little bit. It didn't get rid of everything. They gave you Z-Pack? So One of them Z-Pack? He did. I got a Z-Pack, and I got uh, – I'm trying to think what else I got. I got a bunch of stuff. And then I got nasal stuff uh, to, to help with, like, any nos- – like, any inflama- – it doesn't even matter what I got. <laughs> But if you all that matters is here is it doesn't help anything. It's a virus, right? I, I I I didn't get antibiotics. I got like I'm trying to think of what the hell I got. I got something. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. Okay. If it's viral, though, isn't there something that can kill the virus? Mm, uh, not really. And exactly, the doctors are like, really? You should just like wait it out. Yeah. Like that's how this works. It's a it's a coughing thing that it. It's like having a cold. Get it and, which is sucky. <laughs> yeah. Which is super sucky because for three or four days, you are like in hell. Mm-hmm. It is sleeping was hard. It was tough. Um, and this is industrial pollution is another culprit. L.A. May, might be behind this shit. That's true. And then here's it, chronic bronchitis is found. Well, I don't have chronic, but it's saying coal miners, grain handlers, metal molders. And people who are ex- uh, continuously exposed to dust and fumes. Well, I didn't know I was any of those. You are, like you said, you're in LA, and I don't, oh, that man. alone probably causes bronchitis to like most LA Ians. But I never get it when I'm here. I only get it when like last time I got it, I got it at a convention. I think it was PAX East. Exactly. No, it's it's overseas. Oh, I got shit. it. I got it last year. I got it when I went to Poland for uh, the Witcher event that was there, mm-hmm. and I had it, and it just kept getting worse and worse through that like period leading up to E3. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I was really sick at E3. That's because I got like bronchitis and then caught like a cold too, so I was a mess. Yeah, right. I got this in England. It's traveling overseas. The duck. Look, all right. It's well, Europe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Europe. You're all filled with disease. <laughs> You're all disease-ridden, and I want you to know when Trump takes over yes. and cleanses the world, <laughs> it'll all be good. Yeah. It'll all be no good. No more bronchitis. No, no more, more bronchitis. black plague. It's all gone. Yeah. We'll build That's a wall. Keep it out. Is, That's, That's how fi- viruses fire work. Firewall. Firewall of virus. <laughs> An actual wall of fire. Trump. T- Trump. Trump. 2020, <laughs> we'll build an actual wall Dude, of fire. I'd vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about it. You could probably see it from space. You probably, as it slowly engulfed the world. <laughs> yeah. What could go wrong? We'll Nobody'd just build a giant fire. But <laughs> you're right. Nobody would. <laughs> Nobody would mess with that. Damn. Uh. Anyway, so I mentioned. We might as well bring this up now. Okay. I mentioned the mm-hmm. animated show. We are going to make some changes in our lives over the mm-hmm. next couple weeks, I guess. Yes. The Cox and Crendor Patreon that it exists now, the one that many of you help us out with and the one that many of you complain to us about all the time. <laughs> yes. We're shutting it down. It'll be shut down permanently. Gonzo. Gonzo. Done. It, we we don't want any more of your money for Cox and Crendor. Mm-hmm. We don't... We have agreed, the two of us, that we do these for fun, and we do them whenever the hell we feel like it, so it's stupid to attach money to it. But, because we do love money, and we completely lack it, (laughs) because we love money and we have none of it, um, our dear, our dear sweet child Dan, our dear baby child Dan, is uh, finally 
Hatching ready to egg. work for us full time. And so that means we can actually bring him on to create Cox and Crendor animations all the time. To work for us on a full time basis, we actually can pay him to come on. Yeah. The problem is a full time animated salary is quite expensive. And so we are going to create a Patreon basically just so we can afford to bring him on. And then he will do, I think. I talked to Dan, and it would take about an average of 40 to 50 days per episode. Yeah. So you're going to get an episode every, I don't know. Month, month and a half. A, bi- a, a bi-monthly episode, right? Yeah. And so that'll happen. Plus then he can do more stuff for us like silly thumbnails and end slates and all that other stuff. And we can bring you guys more crazy stuff with Dan involved as well. So It's kind of like the co-optional podcast animations and everything. Absolutely. Uh, but we started the, that. We started all those things. I mean, we, we're we basically the minds behind the internet. We yeah, really we're the are pioneers. But uh, uh, something, something to keep in mind, if you if you look at, like, animators, one of the big things that was a big story was about how uh, YouTubers were, like, scamming animators to do animation work for them, right? Yeah. The going rate for animation work is quite high. It's, a, it's, it's one of those things where you just have to pay guys to do the work because it's skilled. It's skilled label. Yeah. Label? It's skilled <laughs> it's skill labor. Labeled. It's skilled label. Uh, it's skilled labor. It's something that very few people can do well. And it's something that, uh, for us, is a commodity that we would gladly pay Dan to do. Yeah. And it's something we're hoping that you guys will join us in helping him out with because, functionally, the two of us, even though I would love it to be the case that we could just be like, we have all the we're we're making that uh, PewDie money. Yeah, sadly, we, can just, we don't play Minecraft. So. <laughs> sadly, we did not. Yeah, we failed in that aspect. <laughs> so yeah, but this is gonna make sure that we can bring him on full time and actually have this content for you. So that's where we'd like to direct you, and that'll be in the future. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that we get that all set up. And uh, great guy. There's another announcement associated with that Kickstarter. Or I'm sorry, we're also doing with a that Patreon. Kickstarter. <laughs> Kickstarter. No. Uh, there's another there's another announcement included with that Patreon that uh, I'm going to be quiet on because it involves another life announcement that is super dope. And I'm just going to zip it until then, and we'll talk about it on a later podcast. I'm sure people have questions then. So. Yeah. Yo, enough of that. Enough of that gibberish. All right. Um, how you doing, buddy? How are, how are things going with you? How has how your life been going since we got back from England? Um, It's been all right. Uh... So, uh, let's see. What have I been doing lately? <laughs> That's a great question. Huh. That's why I asked it. I've been uh, watching huh. Huh. watching sports. Huh. Uh, I watched the Olympics. Can we take a... Before we, before we get into the Olympics. Right. Have you seen the new Madden commercial? No, but I've played the new Madden. The new Madden commercial is a minute and a half spoof of the Justin what? Bieber song. Uh, that sorry song. I'm sorry. Whatever that song uh, yeah. is, it's a spoof of that, but NFL player style, and it's so silly and wonderful. I tweeted it out, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's on TV, and it's amazing that this is what they went with to promote Madden. They literally show. Oh my god! Maybe five right. seconds uh, of actual gameplay. Von Miller. Yeah, <laughs> he's just how amazing is he that? He just dances. He's yeah. He dances and sings a song. And he basically says, like, put me on your team when you play this game. Start me. Like, that's the spoof. Yeah. Start me. It's genius. It is the first time I've ever been like, like, Madden in the past has done wacky commercials that are, like, you know, very uh, stupid silly. Yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah, and then Madden season, then chicks explode out of rockets or whatever. Yeah. This was super clever. And I was like, they nailed this one. It's really entertaining. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Good job, EA. I don't know I don't know how that's like for the rest of the world, but here in the States, the Madden commercials every time they release a new one is kind of like a big deal now because they go all out and make like really weird commercials. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was cool. So I know that I tweeted it out. I'm sure Crendor will say something about it at some point on his on his tweets or Yeah. I'll probably put it on the Twitter. I haven't fully watched it, but it does seem pretty great. It's Von Miller. Good guy. Good sacker. <laughs> Solid at 6.8 wingspan, fresh out of college. He has a 99 rating, uh, according to the song. Yeah, 99 rating. One of the four players in the game with a 99 rating, including uh, fellows like J.J. Watt, uh, Luke Kukli. You know, Good. you got some solid guys in there. Luke Kukli. Kukli. 
He's so clueckly. I've been playing it. Great game. If you like NFL, check it out. One of the best Maddens uh, of our generation. I was at the grocery store today, and they have one of those red boxes, and there was a guy getting it from the red box, but he was looking around like he was ashamed. What? Why? He was like, I don't know. It was like this really, it was like a seven foot tall college kid, because there's a college nearby. And he was just like looking around, and then he was like punching in the buttons, and then it popped up. I walked by it, saw it pop up, and he was like, gave it like, <gasps> hope no one sees that I'm playing Madden. It's like, of all the video games, sir, yeah, that is the one that is probably the most socially acceptable to be playing. Yeah, they're like, like if you ask any like normal person, they're just like, you yeah, play FIFA like that's, COD Madden? That's pretty much, if you say I play video games, the vast majority of people think that that's yeah, what you're referring either to. Either FIFA, Call of Duty, or Madden, yeah. like the trifecta. Uh, which is silly, because that's not the case for me at all, but... <laughs> I'll take it as long as they're like that. If that makes you a normal person now, not a giant nerd. Like, all right, cool, whatever. But yeah, yeah he looked I around mean, like he was da- like getting that one game where you have to jerk off the controller in order to play it. <laughs> like he was just looking around. The- he was like, I hope no one notices. I'm about to get this extremely <laughs> popular video sport, game. It's the most popular in the country. <laughs> yeah, God, I hope hope <laughs> no one really judges weird. me for this. It was so a, weird. Maybe it's just a, a shy guy. I got a Mario. I w- <laughs> maybe. He did have a mask on, and he was wearing <laughs> wearing red, so it's possible. That explains it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. No. What? I oh mean, yeah. Olympics. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I got. Oh, I got oh, a thing. Oh, you were going to the so, Olympics, and now you're changing it. So I went to the Olympics. You went to the Olympics. Yeah. And I, and I, I robbed. I, I robbed like, Ryan Bakhti <laughs> <Lochte. laughs> when I was there. <laughs> I got Zika. Uh huh. Not fun. Um, no, I didn't go to the Olympics, but I went downtown Chicago. Because I was like, I go downtown Chicago. So we took the train. And there's this, like, uh, everything was normal. And we got to this one, like, stoplight. There's this homeless man. Mm-hmm. And this homeless man was just smoking a cigarette. Yep. And his sign was like, yo, I need food. Everything helps. Which is kind of, like, ironic because he's smoking a cigarette. So he obviously spent money on cigarettes instead. Uh, but then... But it's like, we were stopped there, and then these two other girls stop, and he's like, hey, hey, spare some money. And we just, like, everybody ignored him, like, like whatever, okay. And then he's like, hey, I know you hear me. I know you can hear me. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's like, hey, you two girls. <laughs> yeah. How about you give some money? How about you respect your elders? <laughs> and then it turned, and I just ran. That sounds like something you would do. Rather than stick around, you're like, I can't. This is so awkward. I can't be no, here. I, just I can't be dangerous. here. You never know. So, all right. Tell me about the Olympics. You were going to say something about the Olympics. Oh, so yeah, I don't the know. Olympics. What were you going to say? Um, I watched them. I'm so glad <laughs> I waited for that. <laughs> yeah. But. Was there anything you saw in the Olympics that you were like, that's cool? Let's see. So. I- Obviously, there's, like, the introduction, right? The big, like, opening night. Which, by the way... I don't remember anything about the opening night except for the fact that the NBC programming was terrible. Yeah. And they delayed it by, like, an hour. Yeah, no, they delayed it. The, they delayed it. <laughs> I can't even talk today. They de- Yeah, they delayed it by an hour, and, and I complained on... Uh, Twitter about it, and some guy was all up my butt about how I was, like, racist against Brazil. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm referring to the NBC pre-programming that is terrible. Mm -hmm. I was talking about how, like, the intro is bad, and I was, I didn't give a crap about the, like, bios they were showing. Mm -hmm. Um, When they interviewed people, there were kids in the background, like, dapping and stuff, and just, (laughs) it was so silly and pointless. I remember that. And I was like, and I was like, get to the actual opening thing ceremony. people want to see. Oh, it was so bad. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I, I had to walk away. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, oh, man, you guys seeing these like people in the background like dabbing, and they're like, what, what do you mean? They're doing the parade. And I'm like, what? What? Yeah, everyone else, everyone else was – NBC, for some reason, was broadcasting garbage. Yeah. An hour of garbage. And then we fought – I like the opening ceremonies. I think they're pretty cool. I'm a little worried that the internet lost its mind over a man with no shirt on who was oiled up. I mean, wait, that's cool. Wait, what? The one guy, was he from Fiji? Oh, Wherever he's from. yeah, he, that guy. Guam, whatever. Yeah, and then he's like yeah, all over the was, news. Yeah, for like days. Yeah. 
for days. And it was, uh, all right, that's cool. That's great and all that we you got these world class like, athletes. All right, athletes, cool. This guy looks like a model, and he was oiled up. Look at this guy, right? Like it's such a weird. I guess it's one of those things where men have probably done that forever. Like, yeah. So I saw Kate Upton <laughs> jiggle her boobies. Yeah, and the internet loses its. Yeah. I guess that's we got a taste of our own medicine as men. But still, <laughs> it was a bit excessive. I was like, oh god, I can't. <laughs> I just can't handle this anymore. Yeah. Um, and then uh. And, then there was a I can't remember what I watched like it was 2 weeks of just a blur of me kind of being interested in paying attention well, and mostly not. I watched uh swimming. I liked the swimming. Uh and then I watched uh the watched some volleyball. Volleyball was good. I like I don't like the volleyball where it's like six of them. There's too many things going on. They're like faking you like, spikes you like and shit. Beach- Beach volleyball, yeah, the beach with volleyball, two people. Yeah, great stuff there. Uh huh. <laughs> and then uh, there was like the one volleyball thing. It was like China versus Sweden, and the Chinese girls were like, "Hey, she touched the net," and they're like, "We didn't touch the net," and they're just like, "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> that was a very quick fight. They gave up on yeah. that. Let's see. So it was swimming, volleyball, and then I think uh, I watched some gymnastics, but I don't really care that much about gymnastics. But I was like, shit, dude, they're pretty good at gymnastics. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to. Uh, I watched. I watched then, a swimming oh, thing. I watched uh, archery. Oh, I watched archery too. Oh shit! Yeah. I watched the finals of archery. Uh, I don't know if it was a specific type of archery, but I watched the finals, and it was a French dude. Was he French? It was a French dude versus a Korean guy. I can't remember what it was. But it was, it was, it, God, this is, it sounds so douchey. It was a European <laughs> dude versus an Asian dude at the end. <laughs> yeah. And it was so crazy because they were like, their bows had 15 sights and like they, they were balancing for wind and then they <laughs> still, they kept getting nines and tens. Yeah. It was incredible. It was incredible to watch and it was so close the entire time. Yeah. Like I, th- I thought archery was really cool. Uh, and then. I think that's about it. I don't think I watched any other things. I watched a lot of the swimming. I saw the uh, – I, I tuned in. I think it was on USA because it was on multiple channels uh, here in the States. Yeah. So it was all over the place. Like NBC, NBC Sports, NBC Sports Net, USA. Like every single blah, 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 blah. possible thing. Even MSNBC had had uh, the Olympics on. And yeah. so um, <laughs> it was on like one of the side channels, but it was – uh, water ballet? Is that what it's called? Whatever it was. Water ballet? I don't ballet. know what it was, but it was <laughs> these, it was, t- uh, there's probably a video of it, because it was a laugh riot. The, the performance starts before you even get in the water. Okay. So there are literally people dancing on the side of the pool, <laughs> and then they, they like, synchronize swim, jump into the water, and, like, dance to get, it was too much. <laughs> it was too much for me to handle. I was dying. It was so funny. Um, yeah, this water polo. I, saw I, that. I didn't see any water polo. I I'm trying to think. I, I saw a bunch of uh, the like r- like running events. I the la- I don't remember what it was. It might have been four hundred, whatever it was. I saw the one where the dude from Canada raced. Uh, oh yeah, uh, the, oh yeah. I watched that too. Uh, the bolt. track, the track. Yeah, thing. and he like started running. Like he tried to catch up to him. And he was like almost about to beat him. Then he's saying Bolt looks over and is like smiles and like just starts running <laughs> faster. It's they both had a moment where they looked at each other and one realized there's no way. I, like he looked at him and he was like, You're not beating me. It was so funny. Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I can't remember any of it. Like it's uh it's all a weird this was when I was six, so yeah. it was it's like a weird fever dream of I don't remember what was happening, but I remember watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember some of those things and then I was like, are the Olympics still going on? Like, no, that ended like three days ago. And I'm like, oh, well. The way I knew the Olympics ended was because Overwatch told me. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Overwatch was like, we're ending our Olympic event. I was like, oh, all right, Olympics is over. <laughs> like, that's always like the Olympics. You get kind of hyped for it. And you're like, woo, here we go. And then you watch some things. And then you're like, all right, whatever. Here's the thing. I'm hyped for Tokyo. Now that I saw yeah. the, the, the closing ceremony and Mario shows up, I'm like, I'm in. I'm in yeah, Tokyo. Dude. I guess I'm they're ready. pushing for video games to be in the 2020 Olympics. Yeah, and they're like, we're going all out, like modern. I'm in. 
I'm in. I want to go to Tokyo to see it. I would love to do that. It'd be so weird. I imagine it will be so weird. That is going to be really cool. And I'm, I'm in. I want to go. You so know they're going to have like crazy shit like robots. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know the opening ceremony is literally going to be like, Domo arigato. And, like robots are going to come out and dance to the song. And and Mario is they're gonna have it's gonna it is four years from now. Yeah. Technology in four years, they're gonna have sex bots <laughs> riding dinosaurs <laughs> flying magic carpets. It's in gonna be crazy. In virtual reality. In virtual reality. It's gonna be yeah. crazy. Was, I can't uh, wait. I can't wait. It's I was looking and I realized that the next three Olympics are all in Asia. So the next one's they? in Pyeongchang. Which I believe Pyongyang, 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 which I believe Pyong- is Korea. Korea, yeah, South Korea. Okay, so South Korea. So that's where the Winter Olympics are happening. I was about to say Pyongyang <laughs> is North Korea. So that's yeah, a, that'd so be a problem. South Korea for the Winter Olympics in two years, then Japan for Tokyo, and then mm-hmm. China for the one after that. Here's the thing. I think there's a reason for this. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, most Western nations are just like we don't want it yeah that's true like i know i know boston was trying to get it and the people of boston literally were like no we do (laughs) not want the olympics chicago and brazil that tried to get it and then brazil got it and we were like thank god i don't have to pay tax money right i think everyone has realized that having the olympics in your city is a giant pain Mm -hmm. like it's not worth it at all yeah and uh I guess most of the, the Asian cities involved are like, <laughs> yeah. we want that, please. So, all right. I mean, that's cool. I'd Again, I'd go to the Tokyo one. I imagine. I'd I'd go. I, I would save up a ton of money to fly. Like, if I ever go to Tokyo, I want it to be an all out. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, fly first class. Yeah. Because, you know, that's a flight that's like, even from L.A. to Tokyo, that's a long-ass flight. Yeah. So, you got to fly. You're going first class. Then... Best hotel yeah. in the city, whatever that is. No, no. I don't know what that is. A tour guide, a single person just for you, mm-hmm. who's going to hook you up with all the crazy <laughs> shit. I want a tour guide who's like, I know Akihabara. I can tell you, I can take you to the place where like the maids rub gel all over your body. <laughs> and I can take you to the cafe where Pikachu smacks your butt. Like all of it. I want yeah, all of the it. The full experience. I want, I want the full experience. <laughs> and then I want to go to the games and be like, this ain't even as cool as the full experience and go back. Yeah. Go on crazy sake tours. Just go nuts. <laughs> Spend two weeks there and lose it. And then blow a bunch of money and come back and be ridiculously broke. That's how you do it. That is how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah, you don't go to Vegas. No, no, no. You go to you go to Akibara. Yeah, and you go get all the uh, the weird things <laughs> like when you're watching uh, uh, Carl Pilkington oh, the yeah. chip eater thing. And he's like, <laughs> he has little fingers that eat chips for him. <laughs> Right. That's what I want. I yeah. want that experience. I want that too. I feel like that's the last thing I have that like for world traveling. That's the really the last thing I'd want to see. Japan would be the place, man. Japan everywhere else, it's it's all, it's all Americanized. Yeah, it's all Americanized. Japan is the last bastion of crazy <laughs> in the world. Like and I want to go. Once I saw that, I'd be like, Alright, I'm done traveling the world. I've seen it all. I'm with you. I'm with you one hundred percent. All right. You know what else I'm with? What? Jump to come step in the sky with the Crendo. Crendo, how's that traveling out there? Uh, well, you said you were with me. You're not actually with me. You're still back in the studio. I'm in the helicopter with you. What? I'm with you oh, now. Oh, well, you are. Okay. No. I'm right next to you. Oh, mine. oh wait, hold on. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I didn't even, I'm right next to you, Crendo. I didn't even see you there. It shows you, you know. Oh, huh? well, that's, okay. that's okay. I snuck on board. I'm not really supposed to be here. Yeah, you know, when you do this for so long, you get, you get used to someone not being there, and you look over, and it's like, whoa. You know, you're turns there. Turns out, I, turns out, I was there for you the entire time. <laughs> Over. It's just like that, uh, that movie. Uh, you know, the one with the guy that's there for the other guy. Uh, the Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible. Um. Anyway, looking down at the traffic today, we got some crazy stuff going on down there. Uh, nothing. Traffic's great. Traffic's flowing, and there's nothing crazy. I just said that for no reason. Also, John Skinner. He's down there in his car. John, keep at it. Keep driving that car, all right? Proud of you. Back to you. Oh, wait. You're up here. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Uh, back to you. 
Uh, yeah, no, I, I got back here already. Oh, okay, good. Shout out to John Skinner, probably the last person who will get a shout out on this show. Damn, dude, John Skinner. John Skinner lucked out. He's the last one. Wow, the last that man is, standing. That is, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a salute. You can't see it, but you've been saluted. I'm going to salute you as and well. And then we'll go over to the weather desk with Crendor. How's the weather looking? Yep. Uh, weather, uh, let me tell you something. A lot of people were concerned about Wappy. Because they saw the, uh, the the Coxcon panel, and they were like, was Wappy okay? He got sent back by TSA for the knife thing. Uh-huh. He's, All he's easy? Stuff. He's fine. We have no... He's look, got his knife I have back. no proof of life. I have not heard Wappy in forever. I need... This is like when you when someone kidnaps someone, they're like, let me talk to him. You have not let me... I don't know where Wappy's at. You say Wappy's fine. I have not heard Wappy at all recently. He's right here. He's wearing Overwatch shades. You know those ones from PAX? I'm waiting to hear Wappy. I do know. I do. I do. Yeah, he's wow. wearing those. He's got a couple of those on. Uh, he has a couple? Yeah. Okay. He has two of them on. Uh-huh. You know, it is. He's so wild. Robot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Wappy activated. Hi, Wappy. Hello, Wappy. <laughs> Five, four, eight, seven, six. Wappy sounds a little lower than usual. Stone <laughs> that, sure Lake, Wappy? Wisconsin. This is like that movie where she's like, it's not my son. Yeah, it's, Wappy, right. it's not my son. <laughs> Dude. Uh-huh. Dude, this is Wappy. I mean, he did get tweaked a bit. He did get uh, thrown back uh-huh. by the TSA. He's been through a lot. Uh, and, you know, I don't know that's change true. a man or a robot. Especially with a robot. It's a lot. Stone Lake, Wisconsin, 62 degrees Fahrenheit, feels like 62 degrees Fahrenheit, high, low, 53 degrees Fahrenheit, UV index, 0 out of 10, tonight, partly cloudy, 53 degrees Fahrenheit, 20% chance, humidity, Saturday, high, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 20% Here's my problem. chance. That doesn't sound like Wappy at all. It sounds like an intergalactic <laughs> warlord in a sci-fi movie. Yeah. I do not mm. understand humans. <laughs> yeah, they might have messed with him at the airport. They, they might have. They might have they to might send have. him back to Wapo Factory. Wapo Factory? Yeah, that's where they make the Wappies. Of course. That's in South Dakota. So, costs, wow. Costs of having a factory in South Dakota, extremely cheap. Six dollars. Yeah, it's six dollars a month. Exactly six dollars. <laughs> you sell WAPI units for forty five thousand. Yeah. Uh, it's I got all one profit. for free. Wow. Why? They just like the show. So oh. I sent them an email. I was like, hey guys. Oh, and then they're like, hey, you know, we'll give you a WAPI unit for free. And I was like, thanks, dude. I wish I wish more people would do that. Yeah. I know, Send right? Send stuff for free. <laughs> I like free things. That'd be great. <laughs> if you are a company out there who owns $45,000 of equipment and you want to send us one, we'll take it. Yeah. We'll gladly take it, especially if you only pay $6 a month. Yeah. Really? That's no loss to you. You're making a you're fortune. Making you're Trump making Trump money. <laughs> then you're going to build a firewall. <laughs> a wall of fire <laughs> around South Dakota. Little, a literal wall, wall of fire. fire. Sadly, nobody wants to go to South Dakota, so it doesn't matter. Uh, speaking of no one wants to go to South Dakota, let's talk sports. Uh, sports. I don't know what that transition was, uh, but sure. Welcome. Welcome to the sports desk. We did talk about sports a bunch today, though. Did we? That's the Olympics. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Olympics. Uh, main thing, football started again. Hey! Re- you know, f- real football. Uh, American football. Wow. Uh, My apologies <laughs> to the rest of the world. <laughs> Great stuff's happening. We got uh, preseason games are going on. I've been watching the hard knocks about the Los Angeles Rams. I have too. Shit, dude. I. It's a good show. I thought that the Rams would thoroughly suck. No, they're not bad. They're not. Yeah, they're not sucky. They're not great, but they're not sucky. I was That's convinced they they'd do. be terrible. No, 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 no. They almost made the playoffs a few times. Their thing is, okay, here's, here's being an NFL super analyst. That's what you are. That's me. Uh, the Rams are like an eight and eight team, and if they don't get injured, they can be like nine and seven, ten and six. But if they do get injured, they can be like seven and nine, 
six and ten. It's just it depends. And then they have Jeff Fitch- Fisher uh, coaching them, who's like the like known across all football aficionados, right? He is the eight and eight coach. He is the guy who'll get your team to eight and eight. I think that says less about the Rams and more about yeah. their division. Yeah, well, but but San Francisco is really bad now. They also got Chip Kelly, which is just the worst. I don't know why they did that. And then Seattle's still good, so it's kind of like, Ugh. but then uh, who's the other team in their division? <laughs> Hold on, is uh Seattle, San Francisco, and Arizona. Arizona is also good, so that kind of sucks for them. Well, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. But preseason's going well. It's a lot of fun. And I like football. America. And now LA is a football town, so everything about this place is a mess now. <laughs> At least for a few years until people lose interest. They, they won't. It's LA. They'll keep <laughs> they'll keep going. And if people lose interest, they'll buy another team and bring them in. That's true too. They'll get the Raiders. The Raiders. I think the like Raiders are I, I guess LA. Uh, L.A. Las Vegas bought Las Vegas. Like, the naming yeah. rights for Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, they really want to go to Las Vegas. I mean, if you thought the Raiders were a crazy crowd before, mm-hmm. Vegas Raiders? Oh, my God. The field the will be Vegas covered Raiders. in blood. It'll be like It'll real Coliseum. Literal Raiders. Yes. It'll be like <laughs> literal Coliseum battles. They will be, <laughs> yeah. Teams will go there expecting to play football and end up fighting Tigers. <laughs> The tigers they the tigers I mean, they play will not be from Detroit. They'll be from Africa, <laughs> and they will eat people. Yeah. Well, the Detroit Tigers are baseball. But oh, lions, the lions, lions, whatever. No, yeah. it will not be. It'll, the, the Detroit Tigers will show up to face off with a football team. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. We brought our bats with. <laughs> they start swinging bats at football players. I'd pay to watch that. I'd pay to watch I that too. I would watch that. <laughs> Just like the, the battle games. of the sports. <laughs> like ar- archers versus water polo guys. <laughs> That'd be great. Like we're out of yeah, water. We're useless. Dodge these <laughs> arrows, assholes. That'd be amazing. Uh, uh that's all nice. right, Crendor. I know usually this is the part where I'm like, "What's our big news story of the week?" Yeah. But I found three stories this week, actually, that were sent to us. Oh shit! By dude. listeners, and I'm gonna send you them one after the other. I've seen these. I know what these are. I want you to read okay. these and lose your mind. Okay. All right, here we go. The first story is thusly. A woman drops kick drop kicks Kroger cake saying it was ruined? What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I've already pictured this in my mind. It's amazing. All right, let's see. Bloomfield Township, Michigan. Bloomfield Township Police are investigating whether a local Kroger customer, unhappy with her custom birthday cake, drop-kicked the cake in frustration, then stomped on it in front of employees before storming out of the store. The incident happened at about 2 p.m. Saturday when the woman arrived to pick up a Batman vs. Superman birthday There's cake. There's your problem. Yeah. Prob- yeah. I like how we both <laughs> have the exact same joke. Like, everyone gets that that's already a problem. <laughs> Everybody gay. Uh, so she yeah she went to get that. Yet the woman not named by police was not satisfied with the decoration on the cake. So she went behind the bakery counter in an attempt to fix it herself. <laughs> Employees who could uh, who could not have known what to what was to follow told the woman she could not be behind the counter and had to step away. This only seemed to make her angrier. She carried the cake back around to the front of the counter, then drop kicked it. The, the Kroger manager told police. The action caused pieces of cake and frosting to be stoned about the bakery section of the store, the news release added. The woman also reported s- reportedly stepped on the cake several times and shouted an expletive while yelling, They bleepin' ruined my seven-year-old's birthday cake. She then left the store quickly, kicking over a wet floor sign on her way out. When police later interviewed the woman, she acknowledged she was upset about the lackluster decoration, which was not as she expected. But she rejected the notion that she drop-kicked the cake and told police it accidentally slipped out of her hand. <laughs> Investigators are looking into the incident and did not announce any arrest. Kroger says it does not have any video surveillance. Come on. Uh, police may never know the birthday cake, what it looked like. I uh, just want to take a moment uh, to... Right. Focus in on the behavior mm-hmm. of this woman. 
if she... I feel like this is one of those cyclical things in that her kid is probably a giant asshole who would oh, who yeah. would freak out about the cake because the mom is a giant asshole who freaks out yeah, about a cake. Exactly. It's like the the loop. They just they learn it from the parents and they become the parent and the parent is like the loop the it, cycle. It's it's hilarious to me that they got a Batman versus Superman cake. So already the what I would expect if you go to Kroger to get a cake, you're gonna get a Batman mm-hmm. logo and a Superman logo on a cake. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. I don't know what else she expected, let alone why she thought she could then go behind the counter to fix it herself. Yeah. And like one time here's a perfect example. One time I went to a Kroger years ago when I lived in Ohio, got a cake, I wanted to change something. <laughs> on the counter, they were like, Well, here, you can use this icing thing and write on it. Yeah. They were like, here, let me be of help to you, sir. Yeah. I don't know why she was like, I got this. I'm going to go behind the – and they start fixing it. That's crazy. Then when they were like, yeah. ma'am, you can't do this, her immediate response was to drop kick a cake. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're – I don't uh, – yeah, there's so many, like fl- – And then on her know. way out, she kicks over a, like, wet floor sign. Like, F your yeah. wet floor. Like, are you ki- <laughs> so she obviously has some anger issues. Ob- obviously. <laughs> I c- I read uh, that and was like this is a crazy yeah, so person. I mean, like no kid's gonna look at that and be like, oh man. And this is what I was uh, saying when I first read this article. The first thing I thought of was, no kid, no kid. It doesn't matter who you are. Mm-hmm. Remembers what their seventh, seven year old birthday cake looked like. Yeah. No one, no one Nobody. remembers when you were seven what your birthday cake looked like. No one does because to you it's cake that you then eat. You get a crazy sugar high. You're more concerned about the cool presents you got. I don't even remember what yeah. cool presents I got for my seventh birthday party because it doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah, like at I all. remember you just get like you get theme I get like themed cakes like a Spider Man yes. or something. But like I was never like Spider Man doesn't look right. I was like, oh cool Spider Man. Yeah, the worst thing that could happen is the kids gather around the cake and are like, ah, that looks weird, and then they immediately cut into it and eat it and mangle the cake anyway. So why are you freaking <laughs> yeah. out, lady? Yeah, that's. She's probably more concerned about her image. Of course. Like other she parents is. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always uh, that. All right. Well, then let's move on to our next story. Okay. Which is amazing. Are you Watch. ready for this? Man tries to rob store with sword. Finds clerk also has sword. <laughs> what the shit? For a few tense, surreal moments Friday night, a Pittsburgh corner store was transformed into something out of Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's because a would-be robber tried to hold up the store with a sword, only to discover the clerk also had a sword of his own. It happened this past Friday night at the Perry Market in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Two unknown juveniles ran into the store, one of whom was brandishing a sword or a very large knife. The unknown man holding the sword ran behind the counter to demand cash. That's when the store clerk reached for a blade of his own, a full-length scimitar. <laughs> And just <laughs> <laughs> of all the sorts. <laughs> just like that, battle was joined in the aisles of a Pittsburgh corner store for a few seconds anyway. The clerk had a sword, so he just removed the sword and attacked him. MC Hydair, Hi- the brother of the store clerk, told Pittsburgh News. Uh, then when he hit the sword that the dude had in his head, my brother hit the sword. He ran away. Both would-be robbers booked a hasty retreat in the face of the scimitar-wielding clerk. One of the un- unidentified robbers tried to grab a handful of shirts, which he promptly dropped upon running into his partner in crime on the way out the door. I just want to give him a message. Don't try this. You can have the you can have money in a better way, not this, said Hydeir. Please stay away. Go and find work somewhere. I love that these guys ran in. <laughs> With 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 like a big knife, I assume, like a big yeah. like a, I don't know a machete or something. And yeah. this dude's like, "That's not a knife. This is a knife." <laughs> he just pulls out a scimitar. <laughs> it is perfect on every level. It is such an amazing story that they then saw it and mm-hmm. ran. They were like, "We picked the wrong place to rob." <laughs> it's just like I'm watching the video thing too. And the dude's like, he just grabs his scimitar. And then the guy sees that he has the scimitar, and then he's like, oh, shit. (laughs) It's perfect. It's absolutely a perfect story. (laughs) It really is. But there's an even better one. I present to you our final story, 
my favorite story of the week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. Okay, here it is. Couple claims sexual assault by toy at hibachi restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. Uh -huh. Okay. Go on. <laughs> this is in uh, Tennessee, it seems. A woman's husband said she was sexually assaulted when she was squirted with water from a toy at Hibachi Restaurant. The woman, Isabel Lassiter, and her husband, James Lassiter, called the police but refused to file charges when they arrived. It was a sexual assault. It was a sexual style assault on my wife. Says James Lasseter uh, on Tuesday. The toy used during the cook show at Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse was made to look like a little boy, and it shoots water when its plastic pants are pulled down. <laughs> Isabel Lasseter said she thinks the cooks here showed a little too much of the little guy in the cook's hand. It peed on me, basically. <laughs> <laughs> she said. Wasabi admitted one of the chefs shot some of the water in the face of one of its customers. You, you hold it aside and water comes out, Johnny Huang, general manager of Wasabi, said. Isabel and James Lasseter were in town on a, on a job from Texas. They said they were mortified when the chef essentially made the toy urinate water on Isabel. It happened in front of our minor children and grandchildren, James Lasseter said. It really didn't have a wiener, but you get the point, what, Isabel Lasseter said. Just think about what is happening right now. A, like an Asian <laughs> chef, dude, just cooking at a hibachi grill where they do showmanship and shit, has mm -hmm. a little tiny guy that squirts water. And when he pulled out his pants, it's a little joke, and he squirted on, on her, and she lost yeah. her shit. And yeah, like who That's cares? what this is about, and she's like, "It scarred our grandchildren." <laughs> no, it didn't. Like they, they're, they're probably laughing. They probably thought it was the funniest they're thing. They're probably they ever like, saw. "This is what I peed on the wall at school." <laughs> please, please keep going. It gets even better. <laughs> uh, police noted the doll wasn't anatomically correct, but the Lasseter said that didn't matter. Just because somebody cut off a piece of plastic, okay, it's not there anymore, doesn't change the fact that you're getting pee on, <laughs> James Lasseter said. Huang said he apologizes to the family and that he's never had any complaints about the toy before. He said chefs will at least ask permission before showing more of the toy boy again. The kids like it, Huang said. They think it's a water gun, kind of like a water gun, you That's because it is! It's a stupid joke! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, like... That's got to be some, like, they got to have something that happened to them in their life that makes them freak I, out I, about I this. I think they're just, like, everything about this story to me screams, like, when you think, my apologies to Texas, but when you think of the more rural parts of Texas, and you mm -hmm. think of, like, these people are definitely the ones that think Trump isn't going far enough, <laughs> and then they yeah. go to Tennessee, they probably assume Tennessee is, like, that's where the sinners are. So they're going there, and they go to this <laughs> Japanese right. restaurant, which to me is probably like, they probably didn't know what they were getting into to begin with. I imagine they were just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't take kindly to those furners, but we'll check it out, because the kids wanted to go. They get there, and then they get peed on by this thing, and it's- This is an outrage. Yeah, they're like, I'm furious. This is a complete outrage, and I cannot believe this would happen to me in a public and private. There is <laughs> there is zero outrage there. Like it is a squirt gun. You got squirted during. A, if you go to a hibachi grill or any steakhouse like that does cooking in front of you, it's in, it's a show. <laughs> the cook is like when they flip the shrimp. Like when I was a kid, they were like hold out your pocket, and you held out like if you have a pocket in your shirt, yeah. they flip the shrimp into your shirt pocket. Yeah. It's a greasy piece of shrimp. No one give a fuck. You pull that pocket and you eat yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's all about like, the I, like the showmanship of what they're doing. Oh, that's so. Then I I read that story and just was like. Furious. I scrolled down to the comment section because I always love to see the comments. Most of them are just like it's a joke. Like chill out. Then there's two people. Marie at the lake says, "Have we lost all knowledge of what is it is a decent behavior? What would your mother or grandmother think if this happened to her?" This was an older woman who did not want to be squirted when she went to a restaurant, especially if it came from under a doll's pants. It is wholly inappropriate and Americans have lost all sense of dignity. It's... What are you talking about? It's a... Alright, they have an image of this little boy, right? 
Mm-hmm. That thing is maybe like it's not even that big. It's like a little. It's it's a little. There's a little. It's a Listen, little figure. All I'm saying is, Marie at the lake. Screw you. She's the person who watches like Doctor Oz and is like, "Did you hear Doctor Oz said that if you get peed on by a toy, it lowers your life expectancy I, by five I have years?" I get my raspberry ketones or whatever the hell. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I got to get my vitamin Z45 from the store. I don't. I just don't understand why it's like it's a little tiny plastic toy. It's not like they dumped water on. They squirted her with a little bit of water, and it was yeah. part of a show. Yeah. And I guarantee everybody around been, her is probably like, oh, had it been that's had funny. it been anybody else, yeah. had they squirted anybody else at that table, she would have yeah. loved it. But they yeah. squirted her, and it became like a huge deal of an outrage. Yeah, and of course the the husband was like, oh, I'm even more outraged for her, which is like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I can't. <laughs> you're going to a place then, like that for a show, like that. It's yeah, so like what scary. do they expect? Then there's Gail. Oh God, right. Already, Gail, <laughs> and they say, "I'm not understanding the reason of the restaurant using this for cooking purposes. Am I missing something here? Yeah, it's a joke, you idiot. Yeah, it's 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 a guy entertaining it's a while like cooking. someone tells a joke. Like that's not funny. It af- it could offend someone. But that's you know what you signed. Like you're going to an yeah. entertain. It's like if you go to medieval times, and the horse farts yeah. in your direction." And you're like, oh yeah. god, that's gross. Uh, you're going to go see men on horseback, like duel while you eat food. So if a horse f- like shits in front of you while you eat food, <laughs> you paid for that experience. Yeah. If they throw a rose into the audience and it hits you in the face, that's what they yeah, do. What? Get better at catching. I just, I just don't. I just, <laughs> then there's Dan don't. McDermott. <laughs> He says the doll's oh, cut off anatomy is probably bigger than her husband, so she got upset. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> There's the internet. I was about to say, where's the internet in this There's conversation? Dan McDermott brought it back. He showed up and was like, let me bring this back to the internet. Your husband has a tiny penis that, has the thing that doesn't have a penis. F you Thanks, love Dan, the internet. For representing the internet. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this episode. Uh, We'll be back with another one in the ASAP. And as always... Oh, I got my bell here. Shit, dude. Uh, uh, Ding. To be continued. (laughs) 